there's always confusion about what's a container, what's a tank, what's oil-filled equipment. I don't want to really get into a lot of detail, right? EPA uses the term container. Common vernacular that we all use is either container or tank, right? A 55-gallon drum is a container in any world, right? A 450,000-gallon storage tank, what do we call it here in California under APSA? Storage tank. Right? What, what is it in the EPA world? Container. It's a bulk storage container. Right? So just, just kind of keep that in mind. You know? All right. So if you, you know, take a look at the APSA frequently asked question. How many of you guys are in the SPCC compliance world, either as an inspector, as a facility, as a consultant? Right? Hopefully everybody here. Otherwise, why are you here? Right? Of all you people, of all you people, how many of you have not yet read the frequently asked questions document? For shame, see, this is where I would not raise my hand very high. You should, <laughs> particularly if you're sitting in the front row and you work for an agency. No, read that document. You know, I mean, here in California, we have the we have the cruddy statute, which we're really, really, really trying to fix. You know, but it's like giving birth to a porcupine. To quote my beautiful wife, right? You know, once it's done, everybody's all happy, but not the thing you want to do twice, right? So it's very difficult to do. In the end, of course, there's no implementing regulations because the APSA statute didn't authorize any agency to write regulations. That is being worked on. Give it some time. Don't hold your breath, but eventually we will have that, right? And it is likely that the state agency that will have regulatory authority to develop regulations is going to be who? State Fire Marshal's Office, that is good. That is a good thing, really it is. Uh, anyway, but, but until then we have the frequently asked questions, right? And a lot of that guidance comes out of EPA guidance, right? So it should be fairly consistent. So a lot of the questions folks have, we refer them to the FAQ. It's a great document, you know, but keep in mind it's just a guidance document. It's not regulations and so on and so forth. Go back, right, go back to the to the chart because there's all kinds of helpful handy stuff, right? Bulk containers, mobile refuelers. Uh, can somebody kind of kick the table just a hair? So line up, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, or the projector. Maybe it is the projector, never mind. All right, then hit it really hard with one. If I would. No, I, I just thought it's cutting off here. Ah, you guys have it in your hand, though, right? So remember, right, there's bulk tank, that's fine. There's bulk tanks. If I wanted to see things move around like that, it'd flash back to Monday night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, so you, you have these bulk tanks, different types, oil-filled equipment, loading racks, loading areas, facility transfer areas. These are all regulated things and areas under the SPCC rules. It is not just about a tank or a container. There's areas that need to be included, handling areas, transfer areas not just the tanks and containers, not just the equipment, right? So just keep that in mind because your plan has to be comprehensive. That's one of the typical failures I see in plans. I'm like, yeah, 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 they talk about the tanks. Woohoo! They talked about drums. You know, be still my beating heart. They talked about oil-filled equipment. Where do they address the loading areas, the unloading areas, the areas where they're typically driving the drums and, you know, piping and all that? that all that stuff needs to be addressed. All right, so I'm hitting the wrong button. All right, very quick and simple example, right? Diesel emergency generator. Big hanging diesel emergency generator, right? This is a facility that has seven of these things in a basement, right? That is the 200 gallon double walled monitored UL listed day tank, right? Is that the bulk container? Eh, we'll get to it later. What, what's it, you know, that, that's a, is that a bulk storage tank or a bulk storage container? Yeah, yeah, it's storing oil, right? It's a fuel supply, right? That's, that's the bulk container, right? Nice double oil tank, right? You have the engine here, right? The engine and the gearbox and all that. What is all that? Oil-filled equipment. It's not just storing oil, it uses the oil, right? You have this, part of this is the lubrication system, right? Another, another shot of the drum. Pretend it's 50. Right? Because that, that's the lubrication system. Oil goes in, oil goes out. Oil goes in, oil goes out. It's a, it's a leveling tank. That's oil-filled equipment. 
It's not just sitting there in storage. Okay. What that? The seal oil unit from a power plant, right? Some of the big turbines, right? There's there's uh, hydrogen. I mean, there's hydrogen in there as a as an insulator and as a coolant. It's really important to keep the hydrogen inside that thing, right? So there's seals that are in there. Those seals have to be lubricated. Hydrogen oil, hydrogen seal oil unit, right? Pressurizes the oil to keep you know the seals in there. What's one indication that that's oil filled equipment? It has oil. What else? A bunch of pipes, right? That pumps and pipes and gauges and you know heavy freaking duty you know. Uh, sight glasses, right? This thing's all kinds of pressurized. That's a great indication that's oil-filled equipment, not a bulk storage tank, right? What kind of containment's necessary? General containment. That's a drain. Golly, that's a drain right there. What's the question that you or your consultant or your plan writer or you, the agency, ought to be asking? Where does that drain go? And what do they tell you? What you know, which is true. That, go, that goes to the oil water sump underneath the generating unit. <laughs> ah, what happens there? Oil and water separate. Then where? Water goes out to the 875,000 gallon retention basin, right? Before it gets discharged through the bottom pipe under the NIPTES permit after inspection. Is that adequate general containment? Oh, yeah. Yeah, could that, let's say there's a big old storage tank in here. Could that potentially serve? As size containment? Sure. Yeah. Remember, not just containment, maybe it leads to an area, holding area, holding pond at the facility. Right? Uh, do you guys, is that thing an automatic discharge out that retention basin? No, no, no. We have to open up the valve to discharge. Happy, happy. It's not just your typical containment as a possibility. Hydraulic systems are typically oil filled equipment, even though it really looks like a storage tank. It's oil-filled equipment. General containment or size containment? General containment. Uh, required inspections or integrity testing? No, not required under the SPCC rule. Good idea? Yeah. Yeah. That. Some kind of big machine lathe, turning equipment. It's got 60-gallon oil reservoir in there. Right, things cycling along. Oil-filled equipment or bulk storage tank? Oil-filled equipment. What kind of containment? General. What kind of set? What kind of? Uh, and what is the criteria for general containment? Quickly. Sufficient containment or other diversionary means to prevent a discharge of oil in harmful quantities to navigable waters. It could be active or it could be passive. It sucks that I know this by heart. It could be active or it could be passive. We'll hit that very shortly, right? Which could include active measures, spill measures, spill pads, right? These guys have a you know, stainless steel containment tray with the spill oil spill pads surrounding it. How much volume? That's a 60-gallon uh, reservoir in there. What kind of volume do they have to contain? This is general containment, not size. from the most likely volume, from the typical failure mode, right? Which for this is probably, I don't know, five gallons if a hose pops loose. Except it wasn't getting about general protection. Right. Well, the SBCC requirements, they have to do it anyway. This is how they do it. Now, what if they didn't have these trays, those machines sitting on the floor? Well, yeah, then you just ask them, well, how do you prevent, what, what happens if there's a release? Where does this stuff go? Well, it goo all across the floor. It would get to the doorway over there. Once it gets out the door, it's going to go down to the storm drain, you know, 50 feet away. All right, what's the most likely release scenario? You know, again, five, maybe 10 gallons from a fitting. They have spill response equipment. They have trained facility operators. So these are the questions that we would ask. How would you do it? Tell me how you would realistically do it. Where is your equipment? At this particular facility, they've got a bunch of vacuum. They have a bunch of air-operated vacuums on a 55-gallon drum, like a 55-gallon shop vac, designed for oil. They have them all over the place. 
and oil and air fittings all over. Yeah, if they ever release, you, you know, suck it up. Active measures, fine for me. Stamp the plant. I don't know. I'd say oper I'd say I don't know. I'd say operating equipment, but they're not going to they're not going to keep oil in it for more than an hour, because once they suck it up, they pump it right out as a hazardous waste. So they never store them with with, with anything in them. All right, bulk tank or oil filled equipment? That's a great question. You APSA folks, you facility SPCC preparer folks, you consultant SPCC folks, you need to know what it is you're looking at. These look like horizontal bulk storage tanks, right? That, yeah, that's 4,100 gallons. That's about 60 some odd hundred gallons, right? This is an oil bowser. This is an oil filtration unit. There's a bunch of filter units in here. This filters out high purity turbine oil. Yeah, it's a process, right? It's a flow through process. It's filtering oil. Oil filled equipment. That is a lube oil reservoir constantly circulating and filtering and pressurizing. Oil filled equipment. Big oil filled equipment, but oil filled equipment. So it looks like a bulk tank. I don't mean to keep talking and flip my back to you guys. You know, but that's oil filled equipment. It is critical for whoever's writing SPCC plans and reviewing SPCC plans to ask what does this do? That's a bulk storage container, right? And now you can't see in this picture, but there's a whole set of bulk storage tanks outside in secondary containment that you know they're trying to drain out of you know drain out of the out of the turbines and all that stuff, right? So it initially goes through the systems here. If they need to hold it for a while, boom, they pipe it out to the store. Those are bulk storage tanks because their intent is to store, not recirculate pressurized filters. So good question. You should, because in your plan, remember, what's regulated under the rule and in your plan is not just the tanks, equipment, and containers, but it's routine handling of oil, including transfers of oil. So there should be some description of procedures for how they do this at the facility. In this case, there's about a 50-page set of procedures for how to operate this system. I'm, I'm not copying and putting them in the SP SPCC plan unless they have stake in a FedEx Kinko's office, right? But I'll reference them. I'll say rent procedures for all the stuff that can be found in facility procedure number, yada, 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 yada. You know, the most <coughs> recent copy is maintained in facility files, right? I don't put the revision date because I don't want to have to change a plan when it's done. I want the plan to be flexible, right? I like getting in the work, but I, it's me and three guys, you know? Yeah, we don't have a lot of time to do a lot of that. Right, so we write it very flexibly, right? Most, and if we do include example copies in the plan, we say the copies in the plan are examples. The most current version is maintained at the facility, right? Which is also a nice help. All right, is that oil-filled equipment? Not anymore. <laughs> Twenty minutes ago, it was. You know, there, there, there's, there's, I don't know, a couple hundred gallons of lube oil in that thing. Th th these uh, apparently they, these things catch on fire periodically, and occasionally they break. You know, and they just make for terrific pictures. Uh, but oil-filled equipment, I just like that picture. That is a day tank for a generator, not your typical day tank, right? So we go look at look inside this generator room, and yeah, there's a couple of drums of oil in there. You know, you have to ask, what does this do? You have the person writing the plan has to be. You know, I'm not an engineer, but I could I could trace down pipes. And you know, people need to be curious about things. This is not your typical facility kind of stuff, right? Which is where you go to experience writing plans. This thing right there? Uh, yes. A day tank. All right, day tank. You have a generator or some piece of equipment that uses fuel. Right, you have a big old bulk tank sitting over here, now 2,000 gallons in it, right? The day tank is sort, think of it like a surge tank, right? Motor kicks on, it's gonna use the fuel, right? It's not gonna pull directly from the big main tank, 
but it's the, the, the pump is going to kick on and it's going to sort of hold it up in that, you know, surge tank essentially, right. you know, and it's a float gauge and all that stuff and that's, that's what that's going to be directly pulling the fuel from. That's a day tank, right? What's its primary job? To store oil or to store fuel. It's a bulk storage container, the day tanks are. What, what happens if the automatic float levels fail in a day tank? How much oil comes out of that? When I say oil, I mean petroleum, I mean fuel. How, mu how much fuel is going to come out of that 50-gallon uh, day tank? Uh, 2,000 gallons of diesel that you have over here in the main tank, right? If you're going to be inspecting anything, inspect those level controls on those day tanks, right? The high-level cutoffs. Very often they're not. You know, and you see some of these really old ones. If those fail, you're losing the whole big storage tank. What if that whole big storage tank is a 3,000 gallon underground diesel tank? Not SBCC regulated, right? Ask them how they check the high level controller on that day tank. Because if that thing fails, they're dumping that 3,000 gallon underground tank. Well, it costs money. Well, yeah, it costs money. How much is it going to cost to fix that, you know, spill into the ground? Right? And I don't know what the frequency is. Maybe it's every year, maybe every six months, maybe every five years, whatever. But they can't just ignore it. That's a huge risk. All right. Anyway, we're getting behind. What about this? A couple of drums. Are these bulk containers? Yes. Uh, jet fuel. Uh, that's a jet fuel filter. What's that? Oil-filled equipment. If it's over 55-gallon capacity, then it's in. Uh, what's this thing? Product-tight fill box. Right? How do you know it's product tight? Because every single time you see a facility that has one, you open it up, what do you see held in there? Product. What should you see? Nothing. <laughs> Procedures, they're not just suggestions. Yeah, uh, the Steel Tank Institute guys talked about, you know, uh, uh, base tanks, right? That is a 700-gallon double-walled monitored base tank for a diesel emergency generator, right? It had the manufacturer, it had the UL specification on it. It had all the monitoring equipment information on here. It was not painted over. You open up the compartment, you see a specific monitoring panel for leaks into the secondary containment. What was standing behind me when I took this picture? A unicorn, because it was that rare. <laughs> that, that, actually, that thing, that thing was pretty new. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen generators that have a separate fuel tank. Yeah. That, that is a tank underneath there. Because, you know what? Because a lot of folks, when they put, even when they put in double wall tanks, uh, they just build a berm. And, and you probably don't want to because then if there's a fire, now you're holding a pool of liquid. A lot of these have berms, right? If you see berms like this, there's really no reason to have one, maybe for general containment for all the piping and stuff inside. Yeah, and, and it's sitting on top of a tank. It's going to the facility. Yeah, sometimes you will see these. This one in particular had a big old hole in that curbing. Is that okay? Fine, because where's the secondary containment? It's in the double wall tank. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but there's other ways to do it too. I mean, wh whether you do, you know, whether that if it's there, and you're going to use it as general containment, that's fine. We're not addressing fire code issues. That's fine. But then whatever liquid, say rainwater accumulates in here, what does one have to do before they pump it out? Inspect it for sheen. Document that removal. Keep the valves closed. Yes, anything 55 gallon or greater that contains oil. Yeah. No, not the engine. That's the, nobody counts the engine. Uh, it just, I, 
Maybe in a submarine, you're going to have a crankcase with over 55 gallons of oil. I, Pete, a, 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 a large, you know, big old hanging engine, big old huge large engine, right? Like say at a co at a cogeneration facility, you know where the big ones. Like say down in Samoa, right? Over 55 gallons in the you know in the in the crankcase, essentially. Would you consider that oil-filled equipment that would need to be included in the plan? No, nah, it's like it's like a stationary generating facility. All right. That is a bulk storage container. You bet. Steel Tank Institute, this is uh, one of their pictures that they got from a facility in England. They stole my thunder. So all I'm going to say is uh, this is a place making Xanax, Xanax, uh, Selexa. <laughs> bulk tank, oil filled equipment. For those of you who could read this in front. What is it? I don't know. Take a look. What do you think? What, what's it? Yeah, bulk containers, right? What about this thing? What's an indication? Lots of pipes. What's another help? When somebody stencils wastewater, this is a wastewater separation unit, right? If it's a wastewater separation unit, oil-filled equipment. If it's wastewater separation unit, oil-filled equipment. If this is just holding oily wastewater, bulk storage container. How much oil does it take in here? Not a lot. And when I say not a lot, what are these things in the background? What kind of cranes? Harbor cranes. Where do you typically find harbor cranes? At the harbor. <laughs> with, with water in the harbor. That's what makes it so convenient to drive ships in and out of, right? Pretty close to the navigable water, right? Doesn't take a lot of oil. They may, that's a whole different argument, whether or not it's transportation related or not. And if you buy Pete a lot of beers, they'll tell you. All right, so let, let, all right, I'll let you go ahead. All right, so I think one of the last clarifications, motive power units and ancillary onboard oil-filled equipment. You have a truck, big old truck. Truck has saddle fuel tanks. Are those saddle fuel tanks on that truck captured in the program? No, motive power containers there are. Uh, what if somebody were to take that fuel tank off and set it on the ground? Yeah. yeah. Right. Assuming it's a 55 gallon regretted capacitor. All right. EPA's language clarified in the definition a couple of years ago and defined motor power containers as any onboard bulk storage containers used primarily to power the movement of motor vehicle right? or ancillary onboard oil filled operational equipment used solely to facilitate its operation. Give me an example. What about, a mobile, what about a mobile crane? Get to that in a second, All right? Is that thing exempt over there? Yeah, when, they, when it falls off or they take it off. <laughs> that's in. That's not an accident site. This is a place that, main, that, that repairs trucks, all right? Uh, they should empty that. Okay, here we go, what about that? Assume that the hydraulic reservoirs on these oil-filled equipment are 55 gallon or greater. Well, it's a hydraulic equipment. It's a crane, right? Now, could this crane swivel around and pick up this crane at the same time and both clear air? <laughs> According to the exams that I completed in physics, they could. Uh, yeah, the, these are uh, ancillary onboard oil-filled e equipment that is facilitating its operation. These are exempt. So the oil-filled reservoirs on these things are exempt. Are these lifting a crane? Lifting a crane. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> buttons? No, 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 I hit the wrong button. Yeah. Hey, baby. All right, this will assure that we get out on time. This is, what is, th what is this thing? 
What is this thing? Thank you. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We, we, were, doing, we were doing this long before Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. All right. So what, what is the, what is the, anyone familiar with what this thing is? And this is like a, like a, like a, like a you know, mobile oiler, right? There's a bunch of bulk storage containers containing oil and hydraulic fluids. I think I have a better picture. Inside on board this thing, right? And it drives around different places and it, they top off different things, right? Are these considered on board ancillary oil filled equipment? No, these do not facilitate its operation. It's not powering the crane or anything. These are portable bulk containers. Six zero six six. Dude, I've been doing Koopa conferences for a long time. Six, yeah. Yes, I know. Certainly not unique. All right, but anyway, no. The, these are bulk storage containers, right? All right. Uh, remember, again, planning, do the plan, then you have to implement it. I just love looking for these things. I, it's, for the what? You don't have the internet? <laughs> then, you, then you need to do a Google search on planning demotivator. It's amazing the pictures you come up with, including a whole host that I can't show here. All right, harped on this. Everybody should get a copy of this off of EPA's website, epa.gov slash oil spill, Appendix G. They have this in PDF completable. They have this in Word completable. They have this in Excel spreadsheet. Fabulous tool. Thank you, Pete. <coughs> Different checklist. And what's nice is, if I scroll that up. All right, is this stuff in the plan? Yes, no, not applicable. Is it out in the field? A fabulous tool along with complete the boxes for comments. And it follows the sequence of the rules. Very helpful, very handy. All right, remember, prepare and implement a plan in writing. Question came up the other day, can it just be electronic? Does it actually have to be printed hard copy? You, you need to have it printed hard copy. Because again, you know what happens if the power goes out? You know, you should have some emergency response procedures in there. You need to have a hard copy. You know, just have a hard copy. The card copy I like to see has the original engineer wet stamp, right? But have at least have a hard copy. Remember, a professional engineer has to certify this thing. What kind of engineer? This was gone through the other day. Currently, there are no federal requirements for what type of engineer or what state of registration. Eh, California generally doesn't. It's not an APSA. If you look at the Board of Engineering, California Professional Board, few engineers know California Professional Board which is mainly run by the civil folks, they're going to tell you, now nah, it needs to be a California registered civil. That hasn't been tested yet. Currently, any PE, any discipline, I like to see civils. I will be happy with a chemical, mechanical, and if they're experienced, electrical, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, if you can, it's helpful. But particularly for some of these majors, like the oil companies and all that, they'll have somebody headquartered back in Houston. You know, and, and really what it comes down to, for me, what it comes down to, whoever's stamping it, do they know what the heck they're doing, right? Are they familiar with the STCC rule? I don't care what they built. I don't care what kind of engineer they have. I don't care what kind of engineering experience they have. Are they familiar with the rule? Have they really looked at the plan, not just the engineering in the plan, have they looked at the procedures and the comprehensiveness of the plan, right? And that, that's, that's what I'm looking at, you know, when I'm looking at the plan, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, there's all different kinds of ways to do it. All different kinds of ways to do it. And if the engineer did certify that tank, then you rat them out to the board. <laughs>